Two people just gasped in ecstasy at the sight of, a, of an Arizona sunset. I have nothing against any of the above. But why are we who love to study foreign languages so few? We are almost freaks. Uh, it, is, it is almost a national security issue. Yeah. Americans are the worst, except for the British, who ought to be ashamed of themselves. They're in Europe almost. Uh, why is it? that it's such a minority hobby. I'm glad you mentioned that book. It's still selling well. It was written in 1991. But what I, what I don't understand, uh, I grew up wanting to study foreign languages. I thought everybody yep. did. To me, the babble of strange tongues in the marketplace was the greatest music in the world. To me, there is, no, there is nothing on the printed page not even pornography, uh, as exciting as something in a foreign language that I can't read yet. And yet, and yet, and yet, friends, we are so through. The fact that we've noticed that book at all turn, <laughs> turns tired blood into sparkling <laughs> blood. Well, I'll tell you, this This book is, and and I've told you this before, that this book is fantastic. It is the one thing that, uh, like I said long, like I said earlier, long before Rosetta Stone, there was how to learn any language quickly, easy, easily, inexpensively, enjoyably, and on your own. 172 pages of uh, power-packed stuff. You, you, you put this out in 91, and uh, it, it has been what a lot of people have been using over the years to, uh, to, to learn languages, and, and they're learning everything from, uh, from Latin, which is considered a dead language, and we've had that conversation before, uh, to, uh, to, to Spanish, to uh, some, of the other, some of the other dialects. Um, are, are there... Are there uh, I guess that there's a big there's a big push nowadays for people to learn Spanish. Uh, is is that the one? Do you cover that in the book? I'm assuming you do. Well, yeah, I, I list languages. I review languages, like some people review movies and yep. review books and Broadway so I review languages, uh, their difficulty, uh, their relevance the value that it will do to you. I was interested in um, your earlier comment uh, about the gentleman who's writing books on how to be bigger and better and yep. richer and yep. worth more. I, well, <clears throat> to me, I think the most tangible thing you can do to make yourself more valuable is learn a foreign language. Mm -hmm. uh, and some are extremely advantageous, depending on what career you want. Uh, but even... Even the dullest and dumbest of them will make you a more valuable commodity in the marketplace. Spanish, you're absolutely right. If somebody said, Barry, I've got no relatives from the Slavic world, I've got no girlfriend from the Latin world, I'm a clean slate here, what language should I study? I want to learn one. I'd recommend Spanish. Why? Because America, whether we like it or not, has become bilingual. Yep. Uh, I think it's a mistake. Uh, I think that uh, a country that is unilingual, as we were when I was a boy, and as you were when you were a boy, yep. America yep. spoke English, period, not comma, right? A country that is unilingual and allows itself to become multilingual, where more than one language, you know, dial one for English, <laughs> that, country thinks it's, that country thinks it's committing brotherhood. That country thinks uh, that uh, it is absolutely, oh my Lord, um, they deserve a medal for political correctness. Look how inclusive they are. Look how big-minded they are. We dial one for English, dial two for Spanish, dial three for Arabic. That's not brotherhood. Uh, that's not uh, anything good. That uh, the guilty of poor housekeeping. A country yep. that has one language should be proud of that and hang on to it. Countries that have more than one can't help it. They were born that way. Belgium is part French and part Flemish, which is yes. very close to Dutch. Yes. In Finland, uh, there are two major uh, one. 
seventh of the population happens to be Swedish. So you've got Finnish and Swedish. They can't help it. Hong Kong grew up under British rule, and now Chinese territory completely. But uh, the, uh, the two languages grew up together. Uh, but America is the only country I know of that had one language and didn't try to keep it that way. <laughs> You're not a mass murderer if you say learn English, speak English, and then go ahead and study 25 languages more. The more, the better. But there should be one language knitting the nation together. I wholeheartedly agree there, Barry. <laughs> I, I I could not agree more. I'll tell you every time that you and uh, and and Michael Savage talk about language and how the the United States was founded on English and how it should be English and and everything. I remember reading in in in, in history books about Ellis Island and having to come to the United States and learn English and learn how to learn how to write English and all these things. And I just think that uh, the way that we've kind of gone down, it, 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 a lot of people are going to l- listen to this and think, ah, oh, Jiggy is a racist. But I tell you, it is. If if you're going to be in America, you need to learn English. Period. Absolutely, <laughs> and I just wish people understood that they don't understand it. They think it means you're a mass murderer. Exactly. <laughs> People. I don't hate Spanish people. I don't hate anybody, but I love America, and America was better off. Listen, I'm going to make a statement now that is probably the strongest statement I know how to make on any subject. The English language is the only glue holding America together. Now, yes. Uh, take a look at the. Uh, Take a look at a map of the world, and let's go over to the other side. Let's go over to Europe and go to Norway in the uh, northwest part of Europe and then go all the way down to, let's say, Turkey. Uh, If there is, God forbid, an earthquake in Turkey, people in Norway care. They're decent people. But Mm -hmm. it's not happening to them. Because there are seven major languages between Norwegian and Turkish. You understand? Yes. Uh, here, uh, uh, if, if, there's, if you're living in Alaska and there's a hurricane in Florida, that's your territory. Those are your people because they speak English. If there were another language for Western Canada and another language from Montana and North Dakota and another language for South Dakota and Iowa and another language for Missouri and Arkansas, so on and so on, then people in Alaska wouldn't care that much about the hurricane in Florida. It's not happening to them. Oh, James, help me. Help me. <laughs> Well, let's do this. We've got to take a, uh, a quick time out here with Barry. When we come back, I want to talk a little bit about Barry's radio career. I know we've talked about it a lot on this program, but I just I, I, I love the history, and I love the stories of Barry Farber. We're going to take a break. We'll be back after this. Get noticed, stand out in the crowd, and make a lasting impression with an Asta Rick's digital business card. Create your free digital business card today and put you and your business at the fingertips of more customers more often. You can add your full contact details, big bright pictures, web links, social connectors, and much more. Customers can save, view, and share your business cards with the push of a button. Help bring more customers to your business with an Asterix digital business card. Go to Asterix.com, A-S-T-A-R-I-C-K-S.com. Are you looking to take your business to the next level? With a free 10-inch Pay Anywhere tablet from North American Bank Card, you can do just that. Our sleek, attractive tablets come with a free stand with built-in card reader, industry-leading app, simple pricing, and live support. With our industry-leading applications, you can email and print receipts, add a cash drawer and printer, create inventories, 
add discounts and sales tax, even tips. We offer next day funding, so you get paid within one day of all your posted transactions. Pay Anywhere is much more than just a modern, sleek register. With our detailed real-time analytics, Pay Anywhere gives your business the tools it needs to grow into a real success. Call today and also receive a free phone card swipe that will allow you to take credit cards anywhere by using your cell phone. Get your free tablet now by visiting www.freetabletpromo.com or call 800-616-9325. The response has been overwhelming, and we thank you guys for shopping the Amazon link at JiggyJaguar.com. Check it out today at J-I-G-G-Y-J-A-G-U-A-R.com. Recently, we spoke to another guest on our radio program, and he had this to say about Amazon. I know you guys work with Amazon a lot. It's yes. the number one mouthwash on Amazon. We're not asking you to buy anything you don't want or need. You know you're going to do your shopping at Amazon. You might as well help out the broadcast at the same time. To help out our operation, check out JiggyJaguar.com. That's J-I-G-G-Y-J-A-G-U-A-R.com. And thanks for supporting the world-famous Jiggy Jaguar Show. Attention, everyone. Is your computer getting slow? Are errors popping up all over the screen? You need Quick Speed PC. Get your free scan today at quickspeedpc.com and speed your computer up like new. That's quickspeedpc.com for your free scan today. Go to quickspeedpc.com today. Quickspeedpc.com. Somewhere over the rainbow lies a pot of gold that's sure to make your next fundraising event a huge success. Rainbow Dust, the innovative and exciting project that is a must-have for any fundraiser, is the hottest interactive candy product on the market today. Visit www.myrainbowdust.com to see how Rainbow Dust can add magic to your next function. Find out why kids will be standing in line for their turn at making their own delicious Rainbow Dust candy creation. Use the promo code RADIO2 to receive free ground shipping myrainbowdust.com let the magic begin Jiggy Jaguar the 2008 Community Access Television Rookie of the Year and the Jiggy Jaguar Radio Show on the network and jiggyjaguar.com Welcome back to the big broadcast coast to coast and border to border it is the world famous Jiggy Jaguar you show from the KJAG Radio Studios in Memphis, Kansas we're live Monday through Friday, 2 to 5 Central, 3 to 6 Eastern, and 12 to 3 Pacific, 24-7 at JiggyJaguar.com on the TuneIn apps and Radio Loyalty. And our podcast is available over there at the website each and every day as soon as we get off the air. It's J-I-G-G-Y-J-E-G-U-A-R.com. And uh, we've got Barry Farmer still with us. Uh, Barry is one of my uh, one of my good colleagues. I, I like to say you're a colleague. Uh, one of my good friends in the world of radio. Uh, he's he's one of the good guys on radio. He is also one of the one of the guys in radio who kind of he's in on the joke. He understands what we're doing here. Uh, <laughs> Barry, um, you are a legendary radio guy. Take me back to November of 77 when you debuted a weekly talk show at Kaiser Broadcasting. Tell me this story, man. Well, uh, I don't think about that very much because uh, I think that show started out weak and gradually tapered off. Uh, uh, that's 1977, right? Yep. That, was, um, that was from Detroit. I flew out to Detroit. Uh, every um, uh, every Saturday, did the show, and then came back to New York. And I knew it was time to quit, not only because the show was doing so poorly. This, this was television. I don't know why in the world you brought this up. <laughs> whatever the good Lord in his infinite wisdom allows to happen, I'm not going to be too proud to talk about. Okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> it, 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 as Churchill might have said, it was not my finest hour. Uh, I, um, I was replacing on the Detroit station, and they had about six other stations that carried uh, this weekly television show. I was replacing a very popular local guy named Lou Gordon. Yep, who died yep. suddenly. And he was an icon, and I was a total stranger, and I had no concept 
of what he did. So <clears throat> the audience and I got along like a slow waiter and a poor tipper. <laughs> uh, uh, and uh, I, I, here again, I, I, I thought you were my friend, my worst enemy. <laughs> <friend. laughs> Hey, I, I, I just, I, I love hearing the stories. The, the next, the next thing that I want to ask you about is, uh, I, I was reading in, in your bio that you ran for, for Congress in New York City at, at one point. What, like in the seventies or something? Look, 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 I want you to, I want you to go to the iPod and listen to your own voice because you're helping me make a point. Now listen. Carefully, I grew up in the South. Yes. I have more than once seen African American people uh, sent to the back of the bus. Yep. But n never by a white person, always by another black. Come on back here, man. Don't you know your place? Really? I mean, that's how bad it was yeah. before Brown versus Board of Education in 1951. Uh, turn the page. Uh, uh, women are notorious for getting in other women's way when it comes to politics. That's yeah. why men yeah. run everything. Uh, now, uh, what, in your voice, you tell the whole story without saying a word. The nature of your surprise that a talk host would run for Congress... Who is better qualified <laughs> than I, than, a, than somebody who's a Yes. Person. We both have, we and politicians both have constituencies. Ours does not change every time the legislature meets. We <laughs> all know everything there is to know about the public interest and the rape of the public interest by special interest. We all know everything there is to know about bribery and corruption, and we talk oaths are the ones the people come to when politicians let them down and aren't helpful for their, whatever problem they have. So why shouldn't talk hosts, why shouldn't journalists run for office? Ringside is not close enough. <laughs> but the, 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 the tone of voice that you just showed me that was exactly my biggest opponents were other talk -o. What are you doing, man? Hey, that that was not my intention there, Barry, but 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 I will have to say I'm, 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 I'm trying to make a point, but apparently talk hosts lead the pack in presuming you've got to be a lawyer before you're allowed to run. Track. Exactly. <laughs> I love this. Well, I tell you, that was a good race. I love that race. And my opponent was Bella Abzug, who a lot of your listeners will remember. Yeah. Uh, and it, it was in the old, on the old uh, 19th Congressional District. Doesn't exist anymore. But it was on the west side of Manhattan, and ran all the way down past the Statue of Liberty, and then around the bottom of Manhattan like a fish hook, and up to 14th Street <clears throat> on the east. Side. And uh, 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 the district, I was the Republican. I was a Nixon Republican and a Rockefeller Republican. Uh, and uh, believe me, that was not easy in a district that's 80% Democratic. So in a district 80% Democratic, Bella won by 52%. So we didn't feel too bad about that. <laughs> We've got Barry Farber with us today at 34 minutes after the hour, and uh, Barry has has done everything. He's written books. He's he's run for uh, New York City's 19th district. Uh, he's he's done radio. He 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 did television at one time. What haven't you done, Barry? Good lord. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that. Um, uh, what I haven't done, and what I'd really like to do. Is just uh, relax. I hate the pressure that you got to score a knockout in every round to break even. Yeah. Uh, I'd love to have a long talk with David Letterman and find out what <laughs> what his situation really is. Uh, I would love to have a place where 
Um, no matter what I do, the people love it, <laughs> and they want more, uh, and, and there's no rat race. You understand? There's no, no pressure. I, I would love to succeed without major effort. I just, uh, to put it on a bumper sticker, that's the closest. <laughs> I would love to succeed without major effort. That is awesome. <laughs> that is fantastic. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put that as a Facebook status later today there, Barry. <laughs> Something else I wanted to talk to you about is you you're you're doing the radio program. You're 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 uh, are you? I know you're on CRN still. Are you still doing stuff with right. TRN? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. What is what is the difference between these two? Because it seems like they share a lot of programming. Is it the same company or is it a sister station or how is CRN and TRN? No, well, the TR, they, 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 their names are similar. No, they were completely di different. TRN, um, they suffered massive defections. Yeah. Uh, uh, Laura Ingram uh, and Mike Savage. Yeah. And I will not turn my back on TRN. Uh, I, I love TRN personally. Some of the some of the talent they've got on there. You you and many of the other uh, talented uh, hosts they've got on there. I just I love the crap out of TRN, so <laughs> it's just it's it's good stuff. But I noticed that you do uh, are are you are you doing the the is the weekday program CRN or is that the TRN? Monday, Monday through Friday is uh, CRN, and this is my fifty third year. Uh, wow, of, uh, my fifty third year hand running uh, on the radio, and that's why I say. Um, when, in your 53rd year, you will no longer laugh when when I say that what I what I would like to have is success without effort. <laughs> effort. Uh, you will understand that. Uh, I was being introduced to the speech not long ago, and the master of ceremonies says, "I'm not saying Farber's been around for a long time, but if you look at that picture, that." portrait of the last supper who stirred from the right oh my god <laughs> <laughs> oh barry I, I i'll have to say you you are you are fantastic you are one of my favorite people in radio um where, where do you see the uh I, you, you brought up uh, Michael Savage earlier, who sort of he defected from TRN to, to Cumulus, and um, Sean Hannity, of course, uh, is is with Premier Radio, and they've sort of been duking it out uh, in the afternoons uh, this year. How do you size up uh, that race? Because I I like Sean's show and I like Savage's show, so I really don't know who to who to back in this. Uh, in this, I guess, mm. war that they have on radio. <laughs> well, uh, they are both uh, very, very talented. There can be no losers uh, uh, in that. Uh, I was not aware of what you were saying just now because, you know, my life is mostly work, and I don't get a chance to eavesdrop uh, and see what the other side is doing. I, yeah. I, I get everything I know I learned from you on the air. <laughs> right now. Uh, well, what, 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 I was, what, what I was mainly asking was, was Cumulus has put Michael Savage on in the afternoon to go head-to-head -head with, with Sean Hannity on some of the premier stations across the country, and I was just wondering uh, who you thought... Uh, had the upper hand uh, in the ratings so far, sort of down the middle between the two of them. Um, I am, um, uh, if, if, if a gun were put against my head, I, mean, I, I cannot stand these people who won't give you an honest, straight answer because yep. of political reasons. I know Mike, I know Sean. I like them both, I admire them both. If I had, if a gun were against my head and you said, Barry, give me your <laughs> choice or I pull the trigger, I would have to say, Sean. Yeah. Uh, for the simple, neither one 
neither one is a southerner, but I, as I am. Uh, but Sean would make the better southerner. He was a little bit nicer to people, you understand? <laughs> uh, but I remain a big uh, Savage fan. Uh, and I think they both do a great job for America. Isn't it interesting? Uh, sometimes you go into a situation, uh, whether it's because of uh, legacy, fa old family, old money in a small town, you don't always find the right people at the top. Yeah. Have you ever stopped to, have you ever stopped to ponder the fact that talk radio, uh, man, the cream rises to the top. There's yes. To stop them. Yes. If you're not top material, you either don't get there or you don't stay there. Well, we're going to do this. We're, we're going to take one final time out here with Barry, and when we come back, uh, I want to chat a little bit more uh, about radio and uh, just get his thoughts on some different things. We're going to take a time out. When we come back, we've got more with Barry Farber on the way. Is it time to find a job where you can work from home? Would you like to stop your commute to work every day? Are you tired of the same old daily grind? Would you like an honest list of work from home jobs from companies you trust? Then you need to check out the ebook Killer Work From Home Jobs, 460 Job Superbook. That's 460 work from home jobs from companies you already know. There's no story, no lessons, just jobs, and it's economical too. It's three books in one. The Killer Work From Home Superbook identifies Fortune 500 and and legitimate work at home jobs from global, national, mid sized and startup companies, all for just $3.99. That's right. You can get the killer work from home jobs, 460 jobs super book right now on Amazon for just $3.99. Just search Amazon for killer work from home jobs by Lee Evans and get your copy now. Don't miss your opportunity to find jobs you can do from home from reputable companies you know. Get your copy of Lee Evans' work from home jobs, 460 jobs super book on Amazon today. If you're dealing with the problem of erectile dysfunction, you're not alone. It's not your fault, the desire is there, but you just need a little extra help. It's a common problem with a very easy solution. And that solution can be found by visiting MedCurePharma.com. You know the cost of Viagra, Cialis, and other ED drugs can get very expensive. At MedCurePharma.com, you can get any ED drug you need safely and at a great price. For example, MedCurePharma.com offers Viagra for just 87 cents a pill. MedCurePharma.com has similar savings on Cialis and Levitra too. MedCurePharma.com is confident that all of their products meet the highest safety standards and that's 100% guaranteed. Your purchase with MedCurePharma.com is easy and always confidential. The medications come directly to you. So order online at MedCurePharma.com or call them directly toll free 1-877-446-1474. MedCurePharma.com Welcome to the world-famous Jiggy Jag Bar Radio Program, broadcasting live from Hutchinson, Kansas. Call Jiggy right now, 267-22-Jiggy. He's realizing Jiggy Jaguar is better than me. So, I'm totally serious about that, too. Presenting Jiggy Jaguar. Oh, uh, Tyler Hollywood is going to... Uh... Going to going to going to hate those words for saying those of the because <laughs> now it's been turned into imaging. It is the world famous Cheeky Jaguar show. We've got uh, Barry Farber joining us for one final segment here. And uh, Barry, I appreciate you making time for me, my friend. I know that your time is very limited, and you are a high powered radio talk show host. So uh, when, when you get a chance to talk to li the little people like me, I do appreciate it, sir. On James, come on. <laughs> with more and better commercials than you have. So you can take a bow. Well, thank you, sir. I appreciate it. We work really hard on uh, on, on getting the, the, the various commercials and getting uh, clients and doing a lot of stuff. So I, I appreciate the, uh, the work. Thank you for noticing. Um, the uh, the radio world is uh, is is a strange one. Um, I know that over the last couple of years, 
all forms of uh, – there's Internet radio, there's satellite radio, there's brick-and-mortar AM, FM radio. Um, why has satellite radio just never caught on? Um, I think, um, uh, first of all, let me confess that I didn't know it hadn't caught on. On all automobiles uh, equipped uh, with direct satellite radio, that alone – that alone should assure them of success, seems to me. But, uh, if, <clears throat> again, if I had to come up with a reason, you know, I'm, uh, I'm uh, a real prognosticator. A prognosticator is much better than a predictor. A predictor, <laughs> makes predictor. A prognosticator tells you one day what's going to happen, and next day tells you why it didn't. Uh, uh, I, maybe this is as wrong as it can get. <laughs> it seems to me that you completely miss any any local connection. Yes, uh, yes. Uh, during World War II, uh, uh, we used to listen to the Nazi Hitler German radio on short wave. And it, it would come into Greensboro, North Carolina, like a local station. But for some reason, it never acquired a big audience. <laughs> <laughs> nothing to latch on to. It's just a little bit too grand. But, James, if your show were on satellite radio, word of mouth would give you a big audience. I think yes. at, the end of the day, at the end of the day, content rules. I mean, can you imagine your grandfather sitting there and saying, hey, man, who's that you got on the radio? Hey, man, who's great? Who is that? And the grandson says, oh, well, it's a new satellite show. And Grandpa says, oh, turn it off. I don't want to listen to any satellite show. <laughs> that's, not, that's not the way we think. At the end of the day, content will prevail. Well, Barry, I, I will have to say that that is, that is the one thing that I've noticed with uh, whether it's whether it's uh, Tom Likas who does a who does an internet show, uh, I've noticed that that some of these other brick and mortar radio guys have started coming to uh, to internet radio because of all the massive firings and all the different things that are happening in radio. And that's the one thing that people keep saying over and over and over and over. The reason that AM FM radio is sort of having a hard time right now is the content. People don't have personality. They're getting rid of the local connections. There's a lot of these radio stations. They have a sales staff and maybe a board operator, and that's it. And there's no local local news, local sports, local weather. There's, there's nothing like that. Um, how does radio get back to, I guess, the good old days there, Barry? Well, um, I think that somebody has to make a move. Somebody uh, who owns, <clears throat> by the way, I remember, James, when you could not lose money if you owned a brick-and-mortar radio. <laughs> yes, station. yes. Let's, let's say you had a great idea, and you, uh, you buy a station, and your idea doesn't work. The worst that happens is you sell your station at a profit uh, from what, what you paid for it. Here, now, uh, I, I, the, the best I can tell you is we're not going to, uh, somebody has to break out and say, we're going to go back to the future. Uh, there was nothing in the world wrong with 1939 radio, uh, the local, non-network. Uh, it, it, it was a real auction for action. Uh, everything was competitive. Uh, there wasn't a, uh, if your city had 100,000 people, you had at least five radio stations, and you put that competition in there. Uh, I think that, that is because somebody has to do it. And when somebody does it, if it doesn't work, then you and I shouldn't have wasted time on the concept. If it does work, you can see how quickly it will spread. Well, Barry, um, I will have to say that this has been a fun conversation. 
I always enjoy talking to you, my friend, and I always enjoy uh, uh, you coming on and uh, you you heaping praise on me, uh, which which makes makes me feel good. It feels like that I'm uh, act, that you know myself and my my little audience that I have out here uh, that that we're we're actually doing something uh, to to better and benefit radio. Um, you said something about earlier. You you made a comment, and I and I kind of got away from it. But the uh, you mentioned something about with TRN about how there were there were all sorts of people that were defecting and people leaving and things. Um, why didn't you when when it was when everybody else was jumping ship? Why why did you stay loyal? Is there was there a particular reason or? Yeah, I, I admire what Mark Masters is doing. Uh, his father and I were together on the old WMCA in New York, and I just saw no reason uh, to. Uh, <laughs> I saw no reason to follow the herd <laughs> out the door. If they invited me back, I'd go back. As I say, at the end of the day, content content will make the difference. But look, man, I gotta thank you uh, for giving me this much time, this much respect. You have really made today a great pleasure for me and I want to thank you for it and you have earned you have earned uh, an awful lot that maybe you haven't been paid yet but uh, don't give up kick them again they're still with <laughs> I'm not planning on Barry I I am I am actually wanting to be one of the one of the few folks that go from doing doing internet radio. We, we've got some low power stations and things around the country, but I'm wanting to do go from internet radio to brick and mortar radio. I have already had a discussion with with uh, CRN after you hooked me up the last time, and if you can put in a good word for me at TRN, I will owe you one, my friend. <laughs> uh, I, I will do that. Let me, I, I will do that whether you whether you ask or not. I will do that. <laughs> merits of the case, but let me tell you what I want to Yes, turn. yes, go, Barry. On your show, I was on the air with you when it became apparent that Barack Obama would win re-election. Yes, election night 20, uh, election night 20, 2012, yes. All right, I want to be on the air with you if God will cooperate and do his part. Now, 2016... Oh, you better believe it. You, you... <laughs> I want to enjoy one election. <laughs> on the air, okay? Hey, as as the legendary shotgun Tom Kelly out there in Los Angeles would say, you better believe it, baby. <laughs> we will have you on the air. <laughs> I'll be looking forward to it. Well, Barry, have yourself a wonderful day, and I will be in touch on email. And uh, I just appreciate you spending time with us today. I do appreciate I'll, it, Barry. I'll return the compliment, James. Thank you. And Keep it up. Definitely. Like Have a good day, Barry. Appreciate you it. Too, Take care. Thank you. Barry Farber with us today. And uh, Barry is 